the echo of the famous impressa of the 1980s in the art of a multifaceted creator. In this episode, how the artist and politician Mikola Yakovina combined creative inspiration with state service, why he had to create an underground, and what is the philosophy behind his eccentric artistic images. This is a very honest and decent person. As for Mikola, it was a certain discovery for me there. I especially like the work of Mikola. He's an amazing artist. I'm not a widely known author. I'm beginning to come out of the underground with my work. It was at the origins of the amazing phenomenon in the Ukrainian culture that is listed in Wikipedia as the Stanislavsky phenomenon, the first international biennale of the late 1980s in Preza, in ivano frankivsk This large-scale exhibition of works of contemporary art from around the world repeated for several years, and the artist Mikola Yakovina, head of the region at the time, was one of the organizers of this unique international project, unprecedented, in the USSR at the time. That name was already known when we visited the Preza exhibition as young people. It was an open window to Europe. When our culture was united in the international project, it was a major event. And he was among the ranks of those who came up with the idea of organizing the Impreza. For that very reason, he can be considered the initiator of this grandiose artistic event in Ukraine. The second half of the 1980s had a cumulative effect. There was the cooperation of the literati, artists, journalists, not indifferent people, researchers and ethnographers. It was a brilliant phenomenon on the cultural map of Ukraine that still has not eclipsed with time. The echo of the Ivan Frankievsk Impreza can still be heard in the current exhibition of the Museum of Modern Art of Ukraine in Kiev. Here, a couple of extraordinary artists, Mikola Yakovina and Martha Bazak, who among others presented Ukrainian art to the world in Ivan Frankievsk in the 1980s and 1990s, now present their work to a modern audience. Kontrajure is their first joint exhibition. And then, when it turned out that Mikola Yakovina became Martha Bazak's husband, that became a very interesting name combination. They had different points of view. They were very interesting, not just as a married couple, but also as two distinct artists, two representatives of the creative world and creative intelligentsia. We were really passionate about the idea of organizing that exhibition. It was the first time they united in such a project. Mikola Yakovina is an artist, architect, a Ukrainian politician, a statesman, and a public figure. He is one of the founders of a new wave of movement for Ukrainian independence. The first non-communist to be elected the head of regional council in ivano frankivsk at 33 years of age. He was the acting Minister of Culture of Ukraine in 1994-1995. to He has been a member of art exhibitions since 1980. By combining art, public and political activities, he cares about preserving the historical and cultural heritage of Ukraine. The works of these outstanding artists are preserved in Ukrainian museums as well as in private collections in Canada, Poland, in France, the US, Russia, and Japan. A talented person is talented in everything. This statement is true for Mikola Yakovina. The unusual Ukrainian artist and public figure still thinks outside the box and creates a head of time years after. I began my social and political activities, one might say, from the underground. I stopped exhibiting because I did not want my work to become a direct reflection of my political activities. But having occupied such a high position for a young artist, I immediately decided that it created certain limits for me and barriers that I should not violate. Such a concept as conflict of interest was not an understood or acceptable notion back then. That is, I did not show my own creativity and it stayed in the workshop at home, simply for the soul, so to speak. That is, by 1989, I had made a vow of silence. Later, having headed the Ministry of Culture, which is logical, I could not allow my works to be showcased at exhibitions or offer them for purchase to state museums. Given this, my artwork ended up going even deeper underground. He's a highly moral person, a very honest and decent person. Perhaps he left politics because politics stopped being transparent 
transparent. And so Mikola, with his extensive and interesting life experience, decided to continue the profession that was closer to his heart, namely creating art. The exhibition of Mikola Yakovina's creative heritage is a rarity. After all, the opportunities to see his works are not very frequent, and even such exhibitions are held thanks to his closest friends. It was Olena Yehodovska who managed to drag me out with the works that I presented in the Tadzio Gallery. And now, for the first time in the Museum of Modern Art, the master presented the greatest number of his works, including early and contemporary works of recent years. These are from different times. Landscape is a view from the window of my workshop in my parents' house. And gladioli in the interior are separated by 30 years. That's how it is with all these works. This is 1981. I had just left the Soviet army then. A young man who had served his obligation. The irony is always present, and the portrait of the first half of the 1980s depicts the way it was in those years. The etchings of the first half of the 1980s very meticulously depicted many details. I did not give up the almost documentary way of painting, and here is the ivano frankivsk landscape. Next to it is the etude portrait of Yuri Andrihovich, painted just several months prior to that. I had a large portrait in my mind, and this is just an etude variant. I love and respect Andrihovich. Mikola Yakovina got the very first impetus to creativity in his childhood from his parents. He owes them for the inspiration, search and principled position in the most diverse forms of their activities. I always look back on the environment in which I was born into a family of people repressed outside of Ukraine. The family was deported, and I was brought to Ukraine from Karaganda when I was 10 years old. I always remember the broken, mutilated fates like those of my parents. In politics, art and public life, he tried to take on such things that would be iconic and extraordinary, even though that's maximalism, says the artist, it's an honest position of an artist and citizen. It was very difficult for me to carve my path or to get an education and then find a job, since everyone who opened my passport saw in Western Ukraine. In the 1970s to 1980s, the place of my birth was a stigma, and I strived to be the first in everything. I created paintings, I did graphics and even made stained glass. I finished one of my most interesting, I hope, architectural church projects in western Ukraine. And then it just continued from there on with social and political activities. Who would do it if not me? I hope my work in the Ministry of Culture was a successful and fruitful page of my biography. Ivan Mihailovich Zuba and I learned a lot, and then I served as minister for over a year. In painting, Mikola Yakovina has developed his own style and techniques over the years, but only the sense of time and deep penetration into the sources can give birth to modern art, the artist believes. A very characteristic technique in the art that is quite often applied is a game of classics. It's a dialogue with classics and your own inner essence. This is a very interesting approach and to this day is a relevant motivation for me. In Yakovina's art, the artist and civil essences are inseparable. He's very concerned about the life and inner world of humankind as a whole. Simply for this very reason, the artist endows the canvas both with his creative imagination and his world outlook. At the presentation they said that Mikola had allegedly overcome his dependence on public activities, but he did not forego his principles of life, which he still conforms to this very day. In painting, I was captivated by certain scenes that could be reduced to an aphorism or to some kind of a fable. I wanted to show my attitude towards such notions as democracy, aclocracy and free creativity. As a painter, I am primarily interested in the original theme. I am interested in colors, textures and those elements of the creative cuisine that are self-sufficient, because in essence you can express a lot of emotions with just a few lines and spots. The artistic works astonish viewers not just by their subjects and unusual interpretation of standard or usual images, but techniques combined with delicate, diluted tones and bright clean colors are impressive and delightful.
Это удивительный художник. Мне очень нравится его палитра. Мне очень нравится его вкус отражения. Он очень красивый палит. Я очень люблю его метод выражения. Он такой деликатный цветовой гамм. Его дилутый голд колор заставил меня создать что-то похожее в моем доме. It is very difficult to determine the exact category in the art world, but what we see today at this exhibition clearly represents the creativity of Ukrainian artists in the West at a highly respectable level. I love unfinished motifs and such picturesque works that imbue some kind of scattering or looseness, but I use other definitions, openness and improvisation. This is Roman Korohotsky. This is now a posthumous portrait. This is how I imagined Roman of that time. When in the mid-1980s I met Roman Korohotsky, I made a lithography of him in stone. The works of Mykola Yakovina are a source of not only profound meaning, but also exquisite irony and subtle subtext. The plots that the artist addressed in different years are different, but his individual original manner can be traced in all his works. Connoisseurs of art and his colleagues noted the extraordinary modernity, sometimes even sarcasm, which is more characteristic of young and bold experimenters. Contrast creates an extraordinary impression. For example, Gandhi as a military man, or Marilyn Monroe, or Michael Jackson. I really like his eccentric style. What I feel now is probably in tune with the sentiments of many Ukrainians. My last works are hybrid characters, in my opinion. Those are people who are trying to change the world order now and in every possible way try to emulate the figures of the past. But the most suitable attire for them was vatniks or cotton padded jackets, which they still have on. For example, Karl Marx is depicted as a cannibal. This is my reading of our Tara Shevchenko. I pictured him as a piper, because I am sure that there are people who won't even understand what it means without hearing the kobza. So I made a joke. I have Michael Jackson with the slogan, maybe it was not the skin color, but the sex that hindered him. That's why he's wearing a dress similar to the one that Marilyn Monroe wore. Such an interesting and profound reinterpretation in totally wild imagination. And there is Mahatma Gandhi holding a gun. It's quite obvious that all good people should be armed. Napoleon wearing such a jacket. In short, there are some very modern parallels. Obviously, I have changed over the course of my life. This is all about my creative, political and public career, which was reflected in these subjects. Here I wanted to show this dialogue, the interaction of the present with the person I was, and I sincerely hope that a certain creative evolution will be noticed in my works. Visitors of the exhibition were convinced that this Ukrainian artist is confidently moving forward thanks to the Ivano-Frankivsk Impresa since the early years of 2000, which continues to inspire the artist in engaging in contemporary art. I did not conceive this exposition as a retrospective one. I was more interested in conveying the echo, the dialogue, the interaction of me from that time and the present me. It is up to you, the audience and the judges, how successful it will be. But many of those interesting and fruitful findings continued to give me inspiration to my own creativity and feed my imagination.